Welcome to the I Love Negotiating Podcast, where we aim to equip you with the practical strategies, techniques, tactics, and tools to dramatically improve your negotiation results. My name is Jan Potgieter. Over the past 15 years, I've consulted to and trained many of the world's leading brands in more than 60 countries to help them improve their business negotiation results. I've trained just under 10,000 people face-to-face in a small group format, and I've negotiated on camera one-on-one with almost 4,000 people from most major cultural backgrounds. In this podcast, I want to use my experience to bring perspective to your negotiation challenges. So today we, we're joined by, by Detlef Schultz, who's the, the chairman of the Vodafone Procurement Company. W- welcome, Detlef. Thank you, Jan. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. It's, it's such an honor and a privilege for me to, to have some time with you on the phone today. I know you're a, you're a very busy man, so we appreciate the insights that you've uh, agreed to share with us. Perhaps the Perhaps the first question I want to ask you, Detlef, is, um, you know, you've, you've presided over, a, a, I, I guess, a phase in, the, in the, you know, the maturity of the telecoms industry. And, you know, you've been with the Vodafone procurement company for, for quite a long time where it's been very successful. What is your view? Why, you know, what has been responsible for your success? I think a part of a success is to be open for new developments, and that also means that you not only adapt to new situations, but it means that you are to a large degree drive new situations. And what I really mean with this is, if you recognize there are opportunities, Jan, then yes. I think it's up to you to realize those opportunities and do a proper stakeholder management in the company to get the support for your vision. Right. Right, so, so, so it means that, uh, just to paraphrase what I'm hearing you say, is that you have to have a vision, but you have to also have the skill to mobilize that, bring it to life within the company. Yeah, a vision alone um, can be dangerous because you could be seen as a dreamer. I think a vision uh, is in so far necessary and helpful if you then have the skills and tools to make people understand your vision, buy into your vision, and support your vision. Right. See, the Vodafone procurement company as such is pretty unique um, in our industry. And if you compare it with other procurement companies, I think we have established this company in record time. And that was only possible because we had the support of the entire senior management in Vodafone. What is your view, uh, Detlef, just you know, turning to, to, to negotiation as a, as, as a concept of perhaps the, the conventional wisdom around negotiation? Now, you know, with the Vodafone Procurement Company, you guys obviously uh, have a very strong capability in this area. What is, what, what is your philosophy? What is your view of the conventional wisdom? I think I can tell you what I use over the last 30 years, uh, Jan, if I might say so. And that is that I always played open um, and honest and fair in negotiations I did. Because, first of all, you always meet twice in life. Secondly, there will be times when you need your suppliers urgently. And if you're really able to establish a partnership in the sense of being open with each other, treating each other with respect and fairness, you will get the help you need. That's a, a, a very mature insight. It's pretty simple, to be honest. I mean, yeah. in yeah. every relationship, we have this in yeah. our personal environment, you know, with your friends, with your family, with your partner. Um, th- there are certain basic attributes everybody expects, and part of that is certainly honesty and fairness and openness. And if you do not display those attributes, you have a problem. Is it your experience, that that, that view is, is largely shared? By, by the supplier community, by, by the professional buying community, or do you think that that's, a, do you think that that's an unusual way of seeing it? Uh, if, if it is unusual, I would be surprised, to be honest. But um, I have to admit that, um, that sometimes people believe you have to be aggressive, you have to be uh, outsmarting somebody, um, and you have to try every trick to get to where you want to be. On the long run, this won't work. I got you. So, so in, in, in the same breath, Detlef, and I, I think I, I, I will have a, a, a view maybe of how you will respond to this question. And I know within, within Europe, maybe it's a, it's a slightly unusual question, but we also have audience members from, from other parts of the world. 
Do you have a view, because certainly you've, you've been all over the world um, in your experience, do you have a view that there's a difference between the way that women and men uh, are treated in the context of negotiation and, and maybe how they should approach negotiation? Tricky question, um, to be honest, but let me say yes. it this way. First of all, I believe, and you alluded a little bit to it, Jan, that um, different cultures do treat um, different genders differently. Right? Yeah. Uh, that might happen in, in some countries. However, do I have a view how women work in negotiations? I, I just hope that they stay as women in the negotiations. And the worst part I experienced is if females try to copy men. I yes. mean, the beauty of diversity is, Jan, that we have um, women and men working together and bring different styles, different points of views, uh, different uh, ways of working together. That's the beauty of diversity. And if I destroy this because I want to be like somebody else, um, then then it's not in the sense of the um, of the diversity. Yes. Yes. So so often often we see unity as conformity, but but it's better to see unity as as diversity and harmony rather than than all trying to be the same. Huh? Yeah, I agree. I mean, in the, in our company, yeah, in the yeah. Vodafone procurement company, we have nearly 50 different nationalities, five zero. So by definition of nationalities, we have a huge diversity. And this diversity spreads over males and females so that we have a pretty, I wouldn't say holistic picture, but we have certainly a big variation in ways people work and in, in cultural backgrounds and in what they bring to the party. And to get this to a degree of harmony um, is pretty easy as long as you know what the goal is and everybody aligns behind the goal. Yes. Yeah? So, so, so. Common goals and objectives, I think, are extremely important because then people understand what we are aligning ourselves to and uh, what uh, direction we're taking, if that yes. makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And that, that ties back to the first point that you made earlier on to have this clarity of vision and focus on the implementation thereof in a way that people understand practically. Yeah, and uh, one of the basic um, elements you want to have in each relationship is respect. And as long as you work with respect and treat people with respect, uh, whether they are uh, members of the team, whether they are suppliers, whether they are uh, stakeholders, then you will be successful. So, so maybe looking at it from the, from the other perspective then, in, in your experience you've seen You've seen many deals not work. You've seen relationships, negotiations that have not been successful. Are, yeah. there, are there some insights from, from your experience that you would say maybe there's, there's one or two or three typical things that you've seen that, that tend to, to lead to deals not being successful, relationships yeah. not being successful? Yes. I mean, one of which is uh, certainly different expectations. I mean, no, no, there is no harm if you go into a negotiation and ask your negotiation partner, what is your expectation? Because if, if there are contrary expectations of the negotiation party, you won't make it. So one of the basic elements is to understand what do I want to get out of this and what does my partner want to get out of this? If we're both coming to the conclusion we want to create like a win-win, and I know it's a word which is used overly and overly, but um, you only achieve a win-win if you really talk about what is it, what is it you want to get out of. Yeah, so, so clear understanding of what both parties want as a result of what they're doing. Yeah, so that's uh, number one in my opinion. Yeah, The second one is um, it depends also on who you're dealing with. I mean, in, in amongst human beings, uh, you sometimes have a fable for people and sometimes you don't really get along with people. We, we have friends and we have people who we don't want to be friends with. Yes. And you meet these people also... Um, in negotiations. So there are people who you would want to have a beer with because they are fun to be with. And there are other people yeah. who you say, hmm, not really my favorite. However, I think if you have to deal with both of them, right? And you yeah. only can make this happen if you, if you bring the basic rules of um, attitude, behavior, uh, respect to the table. Then it's doable. So in, in your experience, would you, would you say that it is also, it's maybe work where, where personalities, where people didn't get along, where you can change people and it can change the dynamic of the negotiation? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in business life, um, sometimes it happens that you ask your supplier to change the account team lead because the account team lead is not liked by anybody in the company and is destroying more than gaining. And then we have to be honest with each other and talk to the responsible people in the partner company and say, please give us somebody else. Yes. Happened. I remember two or three cases where it happened. And vice versa, it could very well be that you are approached by a supplier and the supplier says, listen, the people you have in this team are impossible to work with. And then you have to talk to these people why that is the case. That's it. You know, wherever I've been in the world, um, and I've had the opportunity now to, to work in about 60 countries, I, I always ask one question and, and I always get the same answer. You know, which is the more difficult negotiation, with, with suppliers or with internal stakeholders? And people always say that the internal negotiation is the one that's really tough. Yeah. Do, you, do, do, do you have a view on that? Do you, you know, what is your perspective? So first of all, I would have said the same thing. I, I think sometimes the reason is that internally we have higher expectations than externally. Yes. Internally, we expect our people to do much better than we would expect external people to do. So the, the how, how do you say, the bar, the expectation bar yes, yes. is higher. And that leads to the fact that internal negotiations are much more difficult. The second thing is, and, and this is something I, I try to make clear to everybody, when you're in a function like ours, where you do uh, procurement, then many people in the company who should be your business partners say, I'm your customer. And this is something I reject right away because we only have one customer, and that's the customer who pays for Vodafone services. Yeah, And, and we, um, my business partners, my stakeholders, and we in procurement have to make sure that the customer gets satisfied and we overperform on the customer's expectations. That is our joint responsibility. And I think we have to make clear that we are business partners and want to achieve the common goal, and with that, we're back at the common goal. Interestingly, that also speaks about uh, you know, engaging each other at a, at, a, at a peer level rather than one being subject to the direction of the other. Yes, absolutely. Um, but that requires, uh, and we talked about this at the beginning of our uh, talk, Jan, that requires a proper stakeholder management and that requires also openness and uh, communication because you want your business partners to understand what you're working on, what your targets are, your objectives, your vision. If you don't sell this properly, then we're yes. back at different expectations. If my business partner expects me uh, to be the, 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 the servant and deliver to requirements, then we should talk about this because we have a different expectation, and that is that we work together to satisfy our customers. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so once again, you, you know, I love the way how, how almost all your responses tie up with that initial statement around the vision and communicating the vision, you know, and the expectations. That that is clearly something that stands out in you know your success and the success that others have achieved. Jan, if if you look into um, successful business leaders, they all had a vision and said, "This yes. is what I want to make out of my company." If you look, if you look at uh, successful politicians, and I had recently the opportunity to visit the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. Um, he, Ronald Reagan, was a brilliant communicator, he a was. brilliant communicator, and and with that communication skill, he managed his success and made the United States successful. Absolutely. So therefore, I say one of the basic elements, whether it's in negotiations, whether it's in partnerships, whether it's in running a business, is clearly communication. So from, from your perspective then, you know, Nicholas, if you reflect back on your career, you know, we often talk, you know, another characteristic often that people will cite when they talk about successful people is, is you know, being teachable, being open to new ideas. You know, often people are surrounded by advisors or by mentors. W would you say, have, have you had some role models in your career? You know, are there people who've encouraged, who've pushed you, who've, who've sewn into you? I think we all had role models in our career, and it, it starts very early. Your father might have been your role model. Your first boss might have been a role model. 
uh, teacher might have been a role model. I think the trick, Jan, is at the end to take from people you admire and look up to and respect those attributes you would like to see in yourself. And those can be different ones. That can be communication on one hand. It could be social engagement on the other hand. It could be certain leadership styles um, which you admired. All these kinds of things you, you, you saw in people you looked up to, you might take over to a degree, but you never lose your own personality. Yes. You never want to be a cheap copy of somebody else. So authenticity is important. Ah, it's extremely important because people sniff and understand and see immediately if you just play a role. And this is what you call, um, in English, I believe, authenticity. Is that right? Yes. So you must be authentic. Yeah. If you're not authentic, then people recognize that immediately. And then it's very hard to establish trust. Of course, because you're not consequent in your behavior. You're not reliable. People don't trust you. They cannot build on you. Absolutely. But what would your advice be? Maybe that's the last couple of questions. If you, if you were to give some advice to, let's say, you know, some of our listeners who, who are just starting their careers, who are, you know, maybe just finished university and now you know, are starting a career, what would you say to them? You know, what, would, what advice would you give them to make a success of their career? I um, maybe I I start different. My daughter finished college two years ago, and as a gift for her graduation, I gave her a little business card map. And in this okay. business card map, I put the ten to dos and not to dos. Okay. Out of my experience, okay. Yes. And love whilst the we, <laughs> yeah, whilst we don't have the time to talk about the ten to dos and not to dos. Um, my, my advice to everybody would be to be clear about what you want to do. So, for instance, um, be honest. Um, don't play a role. Be yourself. Um, yeah. Allow yourself to have a vision. Be open for critics. Um, don't take critics as an attack because it's yeah. just open critics. Th- those kinds of things, Jan, I believe we have to be aware of. And it's easy to say, if your career is behind you, if you start a career, you will make mistakes, which is fine, but learn from your mistakes. Yeah? You will run in, in wrong directions, which is fine, as long as you recognize and reverse and do something different. All, all of these things are okay, but maybe sometimes you should sit back and um, think about what are my key behavioral um, principles. I want to do, um, I want to manage my life by, I want to manage my career by. If, you, if we are clear about those, um, then I think it helps each of us to manage our lives accordingly, whether in business or in private yeah. environments. Great insights, great insights. Uh, the, the, the last question I want to ask you, which is um, just you know, in, in the context of negotiation once again, if somebody wants to be successful in in their negotiation. Are there, are there some specific insights you would say, do these things? You know, you've mentioned already, you know, understand the expectations of, of, of everybody in the negotiation. You know, be clear in the vision. But in terms of, you know, the, the, the process or the engagement, what are the, what are the things that you think, uh, you know, can really help people to be successful? Yeah, one, one other one which is important, be prepared. I think um, we often allow ourselves to be under time pressure and then uh, brush into a negotiation and are ill-prepared, which shows in the results. So uh, what I'm saying is take the time to prepare yourself for that negotiation. Try to understand what this is all about. Um, Try to understand whether there are alternatives. Uh, Try to understand what your partner wants to get out of it, all these kinds of things. So preparation is, in my opinion, a huge, huge, huge success factor. That's amazing. I think, uh, you know, often I've worked with companies where, you know, the, the preparation almost from their perspective seems to be something that slows them down, not, not recognizing that, you know, you're going to invest that time anyway, either up front or, or later when you try to clean up the mess. You are absolutely correct. That is time very well spent. And, if, you know, in procurement we often talk about total cost. 
Um, if you talk about total time spent, I think the time spent in the beginning, um, you will gain um, at the end because you don't have to rework the results of your negotiation. Fantastic. That is, I, I know you're a, you're a very busy man and I'm, I'm really grateful for the time that you've taken to speak with us today. Thank you so much for your insights. I hope it helped a little, Jan. Thank you very much. Um, hope to talk to you soon and hope to see you soon. Take care. Fantastic.